It's actually, I was off in space. I was thinking of those giant gear pattern guides. Oh, yeah, yeah. With like 16 pictures of if the pinion's too tight and the backlash is too loose, and if your mom you cooks chicken instead of turkey for dinner. <laughs> and like, there's like all these windows of different things that they put in for these pattern guides. Yeah. And a lot of those are finite that if you set the backlash properly before you even check the pattern, all that you're worrying about is just the pinion depth. And if all you're worrying about is the pinion depth, you don't need 16 pictures. You don't have to worry about the drive side and the coast side. If you get the drive side perfect, the coast side should be perfect or damn near. Mm -hmm. And if Close. the coast side isn't perfect, you're not gonna sacrifice a perfect drive side pattern to get your coast side looking better because the most abuse that your vehicle takes is in drive. You want that drive side perfect. You have your backlash set, you need three pictures. You need pinion high, pinion low. Oh. <laughs> I almost put up my middle finger. <laughs> pinion high, pinion low, and perfect. Those are the only three pictures you need. This isn't a complete guide how to do a ring and pinion install. All we're doing is showing you little tricks that we have, little things that we do when we install this, what the pattern is, how to change pattern. Once that all's set and the pattern's good, then you take it apart for final assembly where the crush sleeve, new seal, and all that stuff go together. We tried to get several different patterns to show up on camera. So we actually, we put it together and we kind of had a really good pattern out of the gate. So we took it apart a couple times and reshimmed it so we could get the pattern to move around so we could kind of show on camera, you know, what the different depths and uh, results would be. Step one, set the pinion preload to ensure an accurate reading by torquing the pinion nut until there is a slight amount of drag when rotating but no lateral or extra motion. Do not install the crush sleeve until after a proper pattern is achieved. Tighten the nut with hand tools to avoid damaging the bearing. Avoid using an impact if at all possible. Step 2. Set the backlash. This is a range set by the manufacturer we recommend starting mid-range. Backlash can then be adjusted by adding and removing side shims to bring the carrier closer and further from the pinion teeth. Step 3. Brush on a solid coat of marking compound to several ring gear teeth, drive and coast side. Rotate the ring gear so that the painted teeth make contact with the pinion teeth. Check the pattern to see what pinion shim adjustments may be necessary. I, I go back to Tom's thing, it's a hamburger bun. I don't know how many years ago he's talked about hamburger buns and I've, that's what I've stuck to. And customers understand that too. We could all relate to a hamburger bun. You know, you got a top bun, you got a bottom bun. If you're too shallow, you basically have a straight line at the top of the tooth of the gear and it looks like a hamburger bun flipped upside down on the bottom. When that tooth gets together, it cuts off the top of that pattern creates a small pattern right there and you know you're too shallow. To opposite would be too deep where at the bottom of the gear you have a flat edge where the pinion runs off the ring gear and then you have the top of a hamburger bun. Too shallow or too deep what ends up happening is the teeth are not approaching each other at a somewhat parallel angle. They're not coming together smoothly flat where they come on and approach flat and comes off. That's what makes that defined high or low edge. So yeah, when you have a bad angle, it will come off and it'll ride on the edge of the tooth. At a minimum, you get noise. The medium effect is that you'll have accelerated wear over time. And then the worst case is if you get enough leverage on the edge of those teeth and you hit it hard enough with a shock load under torque, you can chip the gear. Anytime you make a change, you always have to go back to the backlash. Manufacturer recommends eight to 10 thousandths, that's where you need to be. Manufacturers are different. But you can't change opinion depth and just, oh, I'm gonna leave my backlash where it falls. You need to adjust, otherwise you cannot read it properly. Backlash will change a pattern. It's not supposed to or meant to change a pattern. Your opinion depth is meant to change the pattern. So to go back to the backlash you've had over and over, you get a better result on pinion depth. 
At the end of the day, it's about getting it to mesh smoothly. So when you get the pattern right, it should mesh and rotate smoothly, even at a slow speed, even at a speed that you're just doing it by hand and rotating. If there's any doubt if it's gonna be a noisy or quiet gear, it will show up usually just by rotating that assembly by hand. You are actually feeling if you can feel any slight lumpiness at all. If it's smooth as silk rotating by hand, if there's no feel or any noise or any tapping or anything, then it's probably gonna run as a quiet gear. Besides the rollers, if your cage, so, that's just the cage on there. Yeah, that's all that is. Let's see the tickies over here. Does that get a better pattern? Yeah. Yeah, because it's using the drag of the pinion. When it becomes a decent pattern or a good pattern, it almost has the, like a football look. It's the meat of the tooth. If you can get a nice oval pattern and you can rotate it and it's smooth, it's going to be a good setup. Sometimes you look at the pattern, you can't ever get that pattern exactly where you wish it could be. You know, whether it was the cut, right? whether it's the housing maybe has just a slight variance in it where, you know, the teeth aren't meshing to where it would be ideal to get that pattern. If you can get it somewhat centered, the meat of the tooth, you don't have any abrupt tooth edges digging in, gouging, which would show up as tapping or, or a slight uh, lumpy feeling as you're rotating the assembly. If you can't tell by the look if it's perfect, you can tell by the feel. If the feel is smooth, it's gonna run smooth. Both side, drive side, go side. And go side, yeah. Set your pinion depth. Get the proper amount of preload, enough to hold it firmly in place. Set the backlash in the middle and then run a pattern focusing on the drive side. And if it looks good and it rotates smooth, you're done. The pattern's been determined, you can proceed to the final installation. You can use the crush sleeve, Loctite, and torque everything to the manufacturer's spec. That's it. Got more questions? Want us to cover something in greater depth? Drop a message in the comments below. Interested in more parts comparisons, vehicle tips, and installer tricks? Like and subscribe to stay notified about the next fun project in the garage.